Ladies and gentlemen, children of all ages and all those that have come forward to watch the show today, you have tuned into the right place. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to Chicago Land Speedway here in Joliet, Illinois. It's time to see Go Racing League's Race Day Sports Merlebilia Truck Series here on PTA Racing TV here in Chicago Land Speedway. Hello everyone, I am the Crusader Chris Trow, joining you guys here today out of the car and uh, back in the booth. I can tell you right now, I am still heated a little bit from that one, but... Oh, uh, well, if one pit stop about too many, that always messes me up. But I'll tell you one thing, it's not going to mess these drivers up, is the battle and the rage of the war they're about to come face-to-face -face with here on PC Racing TV. They're about to take down Chicago Land Speedway, so let's get to our starting lineup today on the pole. And the number five, it'll be Chad Coleman, the outside, number 30, Brian V. Macklin. Runner right number two is Tommy Ryan, the 99, the outside, and the 60 is John Higman Jr., Row number three is Howard Dalton, the 19, the outside, the 29, Donnie Leah. Row number four, Shocking Giants versus the World. You know who it is. The 84, NDM, Kalatani. Row number, and the outside of him in the 02, it's Shannon Wood. Row number five is Doy Woods, the number 26, the outside of him in the 14, it will be Joey Katina. Row number seven, or six, excuse me, it's Joe Hudson, the 50 outside is the 41 of EJ O'Rourke. Row number seven, that is Sammy Orell. Number 43, the outside. And the 12 is Aaron Axon Jackson. 
More on him in a minute for something special he just let me know about. Jeff Ramsdell in the 97 will be on the row 8. The inside and outside of him in the 44 is Christoph Hall. Run number 9, Mike Kelly in number 6. The outside in the 0 1 is Cody Sturgill. Run number 10, Dakota Kramer in the 42. The outside in the 7 is Scott Simley. Run number 11 is Russell Ottaway in the 89. The outside in the 80 is James Smith. Run number 12 is Jeff Ryan. And the 35, the outside in the 24 is Cody DeFord. Row number 13 is Alan Wild, 75. The outside in the A is Maurice Burnett. Row number 14 is the 11 of Ron Holyfield. The outside in the 48 is Randy Coaching. Row number 15 is David Scott in the uh, number 31. The outside in the 23 is Charles Van Schaik. Row number 16 is D. John Monte in the 07, 96. Jerry Levinston. And finally, row number 17, your final starter of the day, Richard Crane, the number 36. Whew, got that all out. Let's get to racing. Green flag is out. Stage number one begins for Race Day Sportsman of the Match Rock Series. Back down across the lanes, down across the plains here. A little trouble early here. Some problems down there, looks like, for Richard, for David Pencil, Scott, and James Smith. Ooh, boy. Old David Smith, unfortunately, going for a little bit of a ride there in the old Bay 80 machine. David Pencil, Scott, a lot of damage as well up on his machine. We'll go to the P Team Race Team Instant Replay, presented by Race City Sports Marabilia today. Let's take a look, see what happened here. Well, let's take a look at the action here. It looks like the 80 getting into the wall protection down on the outside. And, oh, just came right up. And David Pencil Sky looked like the I'm not sure completely. The 80s didn't realize where he was at or what was going on there. But that definitely was not a place to be at for him. I think he was pretty good in the corner here. Then he just got himself on the back stretch, lined off. He tried to get out of that. Oh, he actually slabbed. Oh, yeah, right there. He actually slabbed a little corner exit there they have in that turn and just drilled it at the 31 of David Pencil Scott. There is nothing he can do about that one. So not the best start out of the game, but again, it's early. We can't give them a little bit of breathing room. We can't get on them too quickly. So right now the field double back up. Uh, you know, just as well as anything, they don't want to be doubling up too long. They want to go hard racing again. Jack Coleman already with a win this season here. He's looking to try to get some more added to the table here. Definitely going to be trying to push his luck and peel the speed up a little bit. Looking to bring the power onto the track and see what he can bring to the table. He's going to have his hands full today, though. That is for certain. I said I had a little message that I have received word for some family members of Aaron Action Jackson. I'll get that in just a minute here. He's currently right now having to figure out his way around the plains here. Going for the top 10 is D. Jackson, number 12. Ready to rock and roll back yet again with this field of drivers. But it'll be Colin and Mackman 
making the start out of the gate here off of turn number three to turn number four here we set him back to the green flag restart zone and away we go back to the green Firing back down around off of the first set of turns here. It will be Coleman, your early leader yet again. Macklin, Ryan trying to stabilize him down. Tommy Ryan's got a thing or two about beating out some of the best here. He took down the ever fabled Tyler Dalton back at Dover Speedway in a hard racing battle. He also took down the hometown guy there at that track in the 84, Anthony Calatane. Trying to bring some East Coast love to the Midwest as he comes flying in through the first set of turns three wide salute and EJ Orwork not holding back early. Dalton stuck on the outside. Orwork forcing everyone in that middle to stay in control. Early set here. But he loses a little bit of ground there as you see the night as number 29 of Donnie Leah. Having a good little tussle here in the Monster Energy 29 machine. First showcase for them this season, so it'll be interesting to see how they play it out. So far, so good, though, as the field continues to move through. You'll see it start to spread out just a little bit and trying to separate in a bit here. Well, a lot of drivers are going to really be dipping their toes, dipping their spots in, just trying to hit every kind of corner and every kind of angle they can to get the best out of their equipment and hope for the best here. Firing it back down off turn number three and turn number four here. Three clean, three smooth, no rush there. No issues off the corner end here. Macklin going to the outside. Coleman down to the bottom. Dalton, Ryan, Leah, and O'Rourke right now working their way through with Hickman Jr. kind of stuck in that for grace as well. Listen to that raw power too. You can hear the truck rarely lifting, only kind of feathering just for a slight second. But after that, it gets right back in the throttle again, back into this crease and back into the seams. They're trying to gas on it to get everything under control. While at the same time, using all that momentum to work its way through. I said there was an announcement I had to make today, ladies and gentlemen. Well, I'm going to now give you guys that little announcement today. Our friend here, Aaron Action Jackson, has a little word for his family out there. He said to me that he wants to give a little word to his mom, everyone out there. He said happy 54th wedding anniversary to his mom and his dad on their 54th anniversary of being married. So congratulations to you guys, and I hope you are watching with us. We always appreciate you watching the show, and hope you have a wonderful anniversary out there. Love from your boy, Aaron Action Jackson as well. Single filing him out, starting to drag him up a bit. You can see drivers currently getting a little bit more aggressive now, starting to kind of move the chain, trying to find some openings and some areas to kind of gravitate to. I think it's going to be something you're going to see a lot too here. You're going to see a lot of drivers really try to make enough momentum through each corner and through each run, trying to best themselves in each turn. But I think the further along you go, the better it becomes and the tougher it becomes to race it out at. And that forces a lot of drivers as motions and control over the course of that period and course of that time scope here. Brian V. Macklin taking the race lead away here from Chad Coleman, but Coleman again, he's the guy you're going to have to watch out for on that. If you give him the race lead early, he may just come back and haunt you a little later. But with a win already, he's locked himself in the playoffs. He's locked himself in position and contention. So the only thing he's got to worry about today is just staying focused on his runs, staying focused on his corners, and making sure he keeps that truck nice and tight where he needs to be. Well, here's a guy that's been you know, having a little bit of fun as of late here on the show. Christoph Hall, the number 44, just last Saturday night, done the unthinkable and got himself into victory lane at last at Talladega Super Speedway in the Next Gen Cup Series car after a heated final last minute battle and a drive that only befitting of Talladega. He managed to hold on and try to get into position and contention and took good control of it all.
We've got Bobby Jackson on the line. He says thank you and thanks, Aaron. <laughs> well, it's wonderful to have you on the show. Thank you so much for tuning on in today. A lot more camera here with Mike Kelly, the number six here. This is the guy, too, that's been trying to get himself into a little bit of a better run or two. He's had luck here before on the show, but he has not had very much luck in terms of winning it out in these races. He's trying to get that figured out today, trying to get it dialed up a little bit so he's not in too much control and too much problematic areas. But winning it out in this kind of situation, this kind of scenario, man, it's going to be so, so difficult to take control. As we stand right now, Tyler Dalton's got the most wins with three to his name, just in trucks. There's plenty more he had in Cup Series. Brian V. Macklin's got two to his name. Jose Gonzalez got a one to him. Chad Coleman got one. EJ O'Rourke one. Anthony M. Catatana got one. Charles Van Schaik with one. Tommy Ryan with one that he added last weekend. Looking to add more. Currently, Mike Kelly, Allen Wild, Samuel Harrell, and Doey Woods with John Higman Jr. all in. A solid foundation just in this race today. Oh, and I almost forgot. Forgot all about the stage breaks here. Yeah, we're rolling up on it, by the way. Five more laps to go here in stage number one. Stage break on lap number 20 here. Lap 45 will be our second. Then it's 56 laps to the distance. And Macklin already looking to shoot out some more stage points here. The U.S. Navy number 30 looking solid, looking smooth. You know, it's funny, too. Literally, his first win, it would come at the Bristol Dirt Track. But his second win would then come literally the very next week. He goes back-to-back. -back, and then ever since then, he has been trying to kind of recapture that magic. And trying to get a little bit more ground and coverage here as he goes along in these races. He's looking to try to get it done today. See, maybe he can figure it out a little bit. But that's going to be a long, hard battle to get to the top of the mountain. Even some drivers... I've been laying low back here, currently just watching the stage break, kind of going toward them. Of course, we can't do this race out justice to our three six, and there are three extra tire sets here, so you can take one in stage one, one in stage two, and then weigh it out a little bit in the third stage, or you could try some different strategies some drivers have done before, which is save that last set for an extreme emergency in case there may be you gotta really go for broke. You gotta hit the kill switch and make the final legs of the race. A race like this, though, so this track is gonna be extremely tight on that front because passing here, very, very difficult if you don't know what the heck you're doing. And unfortunately for these 550 horsepower truck series, you're really on that gas pedal more often than not, so you're gonna need to save the tires a little bit. But you also need to stay out of trouble once in a while there, ho ho! Randy Cochin get a little piece of Cody DeForge there off of corner number four. DeForge managing to save a great save there by the 24 camp. But my, my, that could have been a bad spot to be at. Thankfully, they'll stay green and they'll stay clean. One last lap to go and it looks like Brian B. Macklin will have no trouble putting down his old rivalry. His old nemesis in that 19, Tyre Dalton. You're going to have to set this one out. The stage belongs to Ryan V. Macklin. There is your stage number one winner right there. The number 30 of Brian V. Macklin. Puts the Tundras up to the front here. The Chevrolets and the Fords, though. Still in the top three. Colby rounding it out here. Started first, goes to third. Dalton moving two spot, moving three spots up. Started back in fifth, now moving up the chains in the ladder. And the whole field right now currently tries to prepare up and set themselves out here on the track. We are merely just one fifth of the way done with this race. And so far, we've already seen quite a few licks, kicks, bumps, ticks, and a little few knock and knockers in the middle there. But it's been a pretty solid one at that so far.
So going into pit road right now, almost the entire field are going to have their little say in this. Not too surprising here, too, considering what they have to kind of put to the table, have to kind of put up on the track here. A lot of drivers right now probably looking at the overall scenario and the overall situation, knowing they've got quite a bit of work to do here. They're going to have to really hone the craft here and figure stuff out as they go. From Pit Road, out of pits, Chad Coleman going to get the better of him. Tommy Ryan going to go out second at the end. Galatani going to get himself into the third spot. Macklin late to the party here. Very, very interesting. He's going to take all fours over Dalton. They'll take all fours in fuel. Looks like maybe just right side tires. Or, yeah, just right side tires. Coleman, Ryan, Galatani, Harrell, and Woods. Looks like so. Very interesting. I think their strategy is they're thinking that they're going to get a little bit of a longer run just by taking out only the right side tires rather than worrying about the other half of it and the other half of the equation. It's a very interesting strategy if you ask me, but I don't know. Let's see how it does. Charles Van Syke after starting way back in the back here has now moved up 15 spots. And again, I've always said it once and I'll say it again. I cannot understand, I still cannot stand as well why Charles Van Syke wants to start from the very outhouse and then try to go in like the last couple laps to then fight with the big boys. Because when those big boys are running hard, they're the ones usually to go after and try to get up to, whereas everyone else can't quite do the same here. So now the field going to get ready to roll them up again, ready to roll their sleeves up, get themselves situated, prepare for the battle at hand again. Double file them in now, ladies and gentlemen, it's time to let them loose. 45, going to be the lap and the marker to go for it. That means I've got 20 laps to get to it. No holds barred racing on this one. Only the best may survive and conquer through this kind of playing field, this kind of enduro situation. I will give you guys a little heads up right now. We may not or we may be live on Saturday. We're going to try to work that out. Currently, I've got some scheduling conflicts i got to deal with right now, so... We're going to do our best, but one way or another, do not fear. Saturday will be broadcasted one way or another. We're just going to see how the time goes. We're just going to see how it goes. So if you do see the post up on Saturday, it will either be live Saturday and we'll let you know on our Twitter handle, or it will be live the very next day on Sunday. So do not fear. Either way, we will get the call in. So do not fear there. Really shooting for Saturday, really shooting for Saturday though. So I'm just going to say that right now. All right, that out of the way. Right now, let's get him squared back up here. Jack Goldman, he fell back to third last time. Let's see where he falls this time. Back to the green flag here in Chicago land. Stage number two begins. Off a turn number one and two here. Samuel Rell puts the 43 into the spotlight again. Not only as they put it in the spotlight, he's got some company coming through to work his way through. Three wide back off the distance. Macklin 
using all four tires to try to out maneuver through the field or work right now back underneath and it seems like him and Calatani have had a little bit of a love-hate relationship on some things and Orwark not exactly making friends again. He's already trying to gap the field up. Drafts off five and now looking for Macklin. Macklin, your new leader. Now Dalton throws his name into the hat. Harrell throws up a little bit on the outside. Dalton driving extremely aggressively down to the bottom, swinging through the turns. These restarts can get very hectic, but this is where, in my opinion, the fun really begins. It's when you now have this long, long road ahead of you. Now you have to figure out how to try to get to the top, get to the top, back to the front. EJ Olwork has taken the race lead away. He'll lead him out. And he's trying to get himself another top spot here. A little bit of a top honors in this one. Good start early on for him. But remember, he's already got a race win to his name. So this is just bonus points for him. Those bonus points, though and the playoffs could be a very beneficial factor for him so he knows if he can get him going early he can get this figured out quickly he's gonna have a lot more extra to his name and that's gonna credit him out a bit punching it back underneath right now the real tree number zero two shannon wood going right head to head with the 97 of jeff ramsdell as Mike Kelly, the number six, continues to halt his bar momentum as well. TSN service, number six, Toyota Tundras right now trying to do some damage and do some control. Has a little Denver mattress furniture row. Not too far behind. And a little old name by Scott Simley having a little fun down there. I've already here with Crystal Hall after winning his first race after so, so long out of the spotlight. Got it back in Talladega in the next Cup Series, which lines are now into the playoff opportunities. A much needed affair for that 44 team after all the heartbreaking problems they've been suffering through this past couple races. And now you can hard to see a little bit of what this kind of gap in this kind of racing does for you. Uh oh, until that happens, trouble down there. Randy Coaching is in the uh, grassy plains down in turn number two. Caution is out on the track. Well, oof, uh, that was not a good sign there. If you're the uh, Miami Flu, number 48, let's go to the PT Race TV Instant Replay. Let's see what happened here. Yeah, it looks like the guy got stacked up there. Yeah, Crystal Hall got stacked up there for a while. I mean, really, there's no room for there once you get stuck in there. Got trapped and then got clipped up in between. Go back to the replay here and see if we can get another good look at this here coming off that turn. Yeah, kind of got a little too close for his own good. And ends up catching Alan Wild. Wild, nowhere to go for him either. And sends Coaching back to the grave into the grass. Nothing he can do about that. Also, yes, I know our uh, frame rate is a little slow right now, guys. I don't know what's going on with the live stream. I may be a little slow on my end. I don't know about you guys. Currently looking to see if we could get it fixed here right now. But I think, honestly, just maybe just a little hiccup on that end.
the field right now, currently just getting squared back under the track. Looking to see maybe they could get a little bit more control under themselves. See if maybe there's anything really they can kind of shoot out and drive around off the track. Again, it's very difficult considering how far in between that these drivers are running their lines in, how far they're getting trapped in between the mixes and stuff. So right now at this point, I think all the drivers just want to stay a little bit more calm, cool, and collective and not worry too much about the other. But again, factor in tire wear, factor in everything else, it's a whole lot of trouble. One last little shout out, of course, to Aaron Jackson's uh, family today. They're his mom and dad are celebrating 54 years wedding anniversary today. So, big congratulations there from us at Pizza Race TV. And a uh, little congrats there from the son there, Aaron X. Jackson. So, we know that we know we know our mom's still watching the watch today here. So, we always appreciate them coming on board and watching all the action with us. And everyone that tuned in as well to the show, thank you so much for always for coming on board. Certainly do appreciate you and appreciate everyone that tunes into these calls, tunes to the actions as we are ready to reel them back down across the track here. The field getting set on the track here. Ready to reel them back down around off of turn number three to turn number four. EJ O'Rourke right now looking to see if the personal comfort 41's got one in him to bring it back to victory lane after Daytona. He's looking for another run down to the green. Ten more laps remain. Stage number two. Well, O'Rourke might have had a good run, but Macklin and Dalton already looking to plot against him. John Hagman Jr. also in that hunt and in that peck as well. But pecking him down on the back straightaway. O'Rourke, company, do your rear view mirror, sir. You got a Navy brat looking to make you the rat coming down through four. Fire all cylinders looking for the runoff, trying to get some openings in between. Still can't quite catch him down off the corner. Field will work their way back around through the next set. They're trying to figure out another angle, trying to find some openings. It's a multi group kind of track, but that back straightaway, that's where everything kind of evens it out to then becoming a draft line that sets you into the corner and into the paces. So easily can you miss guide the turn and can you miss touch? And another issue is when you got problems like this, look out again, coaching and Christoph Hall now involved in this one. Well, we're going to have to go to the VTM Race TV Instant Replay and see what on earth happened there exactly, but that did not look pretty, whatever happened. Whoa, look like Kramer and them got completely kind of clopped side there, and ouch. So, looks like the 42, the Kramer there, looks like he was the one that kind of got the whole mess started in the first place. Going to see if we can get a good look here on his end. Why exactly that happened. He's looking pretty good here. Coming down the turn. Oh, right there. Yep, there it is. Oh, wow. Well, Cody DeForge earlier on getting kind of abused and abused out there, and unfortunately now gets uh, completely taken off the radar and off the scale there. Man, talking about a nasty little hit there, unfortunately.
Yeah, a bit of a crazy little battle there, unfortunately, getting some drivers completely flip-flopped and taken out of proportion yet again. And just another nasty little tumble, a nasty little spot there. So currently right now we're looking at a couple more laps left here in stage number two as drivers right now prepare up for what could be a bit of a shootout, a little bit of a drive off from here to there. Right now the driver's currently after that little hiccup and that little mess there. They're just trying to stay out of trouble at this point. Gotta believe a lot of them are so highly indicative and just trying to stay relatively clean. The pace relatively clean on their drive here. But nevertheless, we'll get them squared back out on the track. And ready to rip them around again. Four more laps left to go. Coming to the green. And then from there, well, let's just say we're going to let them have to figure out the rest of the race with no breaks or nothing in between. Right now, we've lost David Pencil Scott, Randy Cushing, Dakota Kramer, and James Smith from this race. Those drivers out of contention, out of the race for now. But they are not out of the season just yet. Still plenty of time to figure that out here as we bring them back to the green flag. We're back underway. on that table for these guys but bad news is he's got a draft issue he's gonna have to figure out he's trying to put the dirty air right behind Macklin and Dalton trying to get them squared out they continue to watch it from behind as the rest of the field continues to move their way through the chains Jeff Ramsdale wasting a little time neither is Jeff Ryan as well Ryan currently 18 spots up hard charging and, Ram, and Harrell right now, he's making some moves up there. And he's going to dive it back down, beautifully crossing it right through the 97. And the 5, Coleman currently trying to stabilize the back off. But the battle for the race lead commences. Two more laps to go. Or we're trying to get Macklin. Macklin drives it in deep. Or we're trying to get the crossover. He's setting up. Down to the inside, there's the crossover. Trying to set him back down on the back straight away here. Dalton looking to try to set one more move off. Orwark look at the nice push through turn three. Got to run off right through the corner. Orwark using whatever he could there from Dalton. But you can see now the gap trying to squap up again. He's looking for the crossover. He didn't get it this time. Macklin trying to shoot Orwark like he got shot there in turn two. Well, it's not to be. One more lap to go here in stage number two. Back on the outside, looking at Orwark, trying to get one more push off. He's not getting much help now. Dalton not going to help him. One last big corner. Dalton trying. He's huffing. He's puffing. But it's going to be Macklin now with the advantage. Through turn number three to turn number four, Brian B. Macklin wins stage number two. Two stages for the Macklin camp.
And a huge get up there for that team, making a good use of the work and good use of the car, or the truck, I should say. And Macklin putting on a heck of a final little leg up there. He did everything he had to and needed to to stay in contention. So now that means we're off to the final stage. One more stage to go and we're setting it back into the pace as race fans. We're nearly done with this one. Hey, welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. Right now, currently after pit road stops here for EJ O'Rourke, Brian V. Macklin. The uh, two heavy hitters coming out, but it's Sammy Harrell making a little bit of noise there as he gets the Guns N' Roses 43 out on the track ahead of Dalton, Gatina, Hickman Jr., and Jeff Ryan. Every driver having a very distinctive strategy here, but most of them deciding to go with the obvious, which is get the fuel, get the tires, work from there. But... Mike Kelly, Scott Simley, Joe Hudson, Do Doy Woods, and them staying out for a little bit. Maybe looking to strategize above all else here. Caution lights are on. The pace truck's still here. We're just going to get them really rallied up a little bit, get them relaxed into the field. We're nearly half. We are just halfway done with this race here. Getting things kind of figured out and done right on the spot here when they need to. All right, coming to the line here, ladies and gentlemen. We will be halfway done with this race, so rain or shine or shine, don't matter from here. You race your race. You race this to the end. Nothing left to give and everything to go after here as much as possible, so going to be a very, very tall order and tough deal for those that do not have quite an option or quite an opportunity to make or break in this situation. You've really got to stay focused on that line, stay focused on that corner, and hope for the best here.
Down in the back straightaway here, Mike Kelly, Scott Simley, these two know a thing or two about being in the top spots and the top runs here. And they would love nothing more than to be there at the very end of it all. But Mike Kelly has still been without a race win. Scott Simley, though, not the same situation, not the same case. He's got a win in the truck. He's got a win in on the NASCAR Next Gen Cup Series. Now, looking to bring one home in the race in the race stage sports memorabilia truck series. Here we go back to the green. Final stage commence. Well, to say Kelly wanted to get off the line and get away from everybody is an understatement. I think he literally wanted to jump out away from every single person and avoid what's right behind him. Three wide for a second. Coming through, Simley trapped in the bind, trapped in the binders, Macklin yet again. Maybe it was really a surprise what he was up to. They're still three wide back out on turn number three and four, though. Joey Gatina having a little bit of fun down there, kind of mixing it up a little bit, seeing maybe he can get to the front or work, though. Trapped in the middle. For the first time today, he's found himself in a spot he didn't want to be in. Oh, he really didn't want to be in this spot, though. He gets clipped. They touch. They spin to the grass, and it's going to be Katina and Ulrich sent to the shadow realm. The huge wreck ensuing on the front three. And Coleman, your, your qualifier, the fastest of the day, getting strapped into the grass. Oh, my. Nasty, nasty collision there off of turn number three there as Ulrich was getting clipped and tunned there by Katina and the drivers getting limb blasted through. Ulrich's run did not quite work out this time. He worked it through two stages, but it doesn't work the third. Another look at it. See right there, it looked like he kind of came down a little bit. He gets clipped there. There's nowhere to go. I mean, at this point, he's already lost. And here, here comes the really bad part. Tommy Ryan, man, talk about taking a nasty fall from last week. Gets a win last week, and now this. Trapped in the bind, trapped in the mess. Charles Van Schaik trying to stay out of that one. He didn't want anything to do with it. Unfortunately, he was just an innocent victim in all of it. That's just part of the race and deal sometimes. One more look at it. Well, actually, I don't even think he took any damage in it. So, Tommy Ryan was the one that took the worst of it. Yeah, he didn't take any of it, actually. I took it. So, Charles catching a huge break and being smart out there. Tommy, unfortunately, not a happy camper by any means of the imagination. But, man, that was an absolutely wild, wild situation there. For the leaders up to the front, trying to make a jump to the front, then all of a sudden getting trapped, back stacked, and then thrown out of the attack. Man, I can't even imagine what was going through their mind when that one happened. All I know is for sure is that will end up sending our drivers back to square number one. So right now, currently, the drivers looking at the fuel run, trying to clutch in a bit as much as they can. Remember, Mike Kelly went in on lap number 32 there, so he's on about 15 lap all tires and fuel. So that definitely is not going to spot well for him in terms of his long-term game plan here. But I think what it really hinders down to is what he's after, which is staying focused on any kind of chance or any kind of opportunities he can get here.
Well, double file back up now on the track here. Race fans, Mike Kelly, Samuel Rell going to be the initiators here. And this is honestly Samuel Rell's best opportunity, in my opinion, to try to make amends for what happened on Saturday night. Could not get the job done. Could not get it to victory lane. That Guns N' Roses 43 has got to be looking at this as literally his golden opportunity to capture the brass ring and get the brass taxes back in his corner. He needs to get a win in before the playoffs begin in one of these leagues. Otherwise, it could be a long road for him. He's been so close. He's been so far. He just needs to get one little leg up and one little extra kick and some luck in between. I think that's all he needs. We'll see if he can get it. He'll have to watch the start from Mike Kelly here, though, as they bring him right off of turn number four. Peck's truck coming off the corner. To the race stage, Sportsman will be a restart zone. Green flag's back out. He watched the start well. Unfortunately, though, he's not in a good spot to make a corner. Old Work's going to get back out on the track. Scott Simley going to be a little bit of a thorn there as they move their way down across the plains here. Tyler Dalton still trying to continue his fame storyline, the Reign of Terror, as we have dubbed it on the show. We named it the Reign of Terror because this man does not know when to stop winning. The most wins of any driver, not only in trucks, but also in the Cup Series. He has been absolutely dominating, and his stage wins and points have just been a mythological ideal for these drivers that have been facing off against him this entire season so far. And they're right now trying to figure out what and where they're going to be able to do to try and stay in control with this kind of race, this kind of situation, as the field continues to move their way to the chains. Jeff Ryan currently trying to play hard charges of the day. He started all the way back on 23rd. He's moved his way into eight. He's 15 spots up, looking to try to think down Dirty Monkey Motorsports. In the 84, talking Giants versus the World. I know UTG versus the World guys are out there. Where are you at? Comment below. Your boy is right now trying to make the moves and make the grooves and make it stick to the, to, to the moves. Mike Kelly right now, the TSN service number six, defending, blocking, trying to hold on. Sammy Horrell has caught right back up there with him though. Three truck battle for the race lead. And Macklin again trying to use the rear spoiler to actually get increase the airflow around the truck to build a little bit more momentum off from the corner as the TSN service six trying to throw the block on Horrell. Horrell using the draft to corner him out, crossover through three. Now, looking for the pass to get to Macklin before he can start thinking of running all away from him. Samuel right now looking in deep, trying to make it stick, trying to make it hurt a little bit. You can see each driver though, man, they are giving her everything they've got. Just trying to stay in somewhat contention. Scott Simley on burnt rubber and burnt heads. Trying to stay right ahead of him. But Kaltani way on the attack and ready to strike while the iron's hot. He needs to. Especially with only about 40 some odd laps left to go. Again, Simley two wins so far in the next-gen cup series. None in the trucks. But he's been trying to desperately to kind of get something dialed in a little bit and see if maybe he's got anything for him. Kind of staying controlled in of his nature though and kind of of his own doing. Kind of hard to go back and look at all the drivers back there as well, but I will try to continue to go through each driver in the field like Cody DeFord and DJ Monte. DJ Monte, I should say. And even Charles Van Schenck and Alan Wild. All those guys definitely deserve their credit, deserve their own, but the problem is the action is so hot up front right now, it's kind of hard to kind of jump back to them. So I do apologize in advance when I can't quite get every driver in this race as I'm usually one to try to do. But then you got the action so hot on the race here, you cannot leave it behind. You got to go where the money flows. And right now the only thing that's flowing is the engine, the oil, the air, and everything that goes with is taken down. An over two ton little piece of heavy machinery through a track like this. I'm trying to muscle those things around here and trying to steer into them. 
I tell you what, just trying to figure out how to get any kind of good runoff for these corners without using that draft. You're using pretty much every little angle you can to throw yourself up to the front to then increase the dirty airflow. But what happens when you start to run into lap traffic? That's when you're going to have to start really tempering the pace and start to figure out a little bit of a gap or two between. And we're going to see that right now as we take a look at our lap times here. Macklin currently right now not far off of Harrell. But Harrell, he's currently getting a little bit of an extra boost, a little bit of an extra gain there on some of these laps. Lap 62, though, you see he lost a lot of lap time there. Lost about a full tenth on Macklin. Gained a bit of it back to kind of keep him somewhat relatively close, then lost it again. So you can see here, lap 65 should be a bit of a gain for Harrell here. It is. It's a 24,000 second gain there, so may not seem like a lot, but got to remember something. Look at how close he is right now to the 30, and look at how close these two are departing from each other. They're trying to keep it as close as they can so they can increase the airflow around the trucks and increase the power on all fronts so that way they can use it to later on use as a little bit of a last ditch effort, last bit of a gas, kind of push through and kind of run the momentum in. Power is everything here in this race, and steering into the track is what's giving these guys all that power and momentum to give the corners. It's a bean-shaped kind of track. Go as close as you're going to get to an actual old, to a uh, legit, almost circle, if you will, in terms of how big the track is. But there is one track, though, that is kind of reminiscent of this place that's not Oxford Plains and of course I am talking about old Langhorne Speedway that's literally the best close to an old actual circle track as you can get in, from the real world anyway you can create a lot of virtual worlds that have circle tracks in their name but nothing like this here Russell Holloway right now in the 89. I've tried, I've tried my best not to say too much about him because honestly, it, every time I say something good or I try to say something about him, I somehow always find a way to give him a broadcaster curse. So I'm trying not to get the voodoo dolls out or anything like that and try to curse him here or get him in trouble. But I'll tell you right now, three white salute. Coming down, David Pencil Scott, turning right down. Uh-oh, well, that's what I was worried about. Pencil Scott gets a little too close there out the runs and getting himself into a bad situation. Ramsdale trapped in that mix. Caution is out. Oh, wait a minute. What, what is he doing? Where on earth was David Pencil Scott taking that thing to? Oh, my word. Look, I'm not far clearly losing control of the truck, but I don't know how I think about that one. That may be a little bit questionable. We'll look at that again. Here's what happened. Came off turn number two. Poor Ramsdale. He got clipped up badly here. Pencil Scott tried to save it. I don't know if Pencil literally forgot to get on the brakes or what happened there. The caution was already out. And he just went right into Dejon Monte, and there's nothing he can do about that one. That, I don't know, that's, that I'm going to very much question there. I don't know, that, I have no thing or two about driving. That certainly was not controlling the truck. Well, I guess I'll look at it this way. He looked like he was trying to steer it out of the grass. But, uh, I mean, I'm, honest, I'm honestly just questioning, though, where he thought it was going to be able to get out of that situation and be able to get back up to into the track here. And I, I just I question 
why he thought that he was going to be able to not get that thing to get in back in the pace and back in the grips here. Considering at that point the truck is lost, caution's out. The best thing he could do is just brake and just stay in the brakes. But again, I could be very wrong. I didn't, but it didn't even look like he was still relatively in control. Just could have backed off a little bit more there. I don't know, you guys be the judge on that one. I know I get a little heated on these things, but that's that's how passionate I can be with these races, so. I know a lot of you guys love it. Some absolutely criticize me for it, but that's alright. I'll stick to my guns on these broadcasts. So right now, Jeff Ryan currently trying to stay out as long as he can, trying to hope for the best here, maybe for a break or two. And it looks like Mike Kelly with some problems, mechanical problems down there for the six, or maybe having to pull back out to wait for the other drivers. It looks like you're just going to have to wait for the other drivers here. Yeah, EJ Orwark right now, David Pencil Scott, and all of them are out of this race. David Pencil Scott here, massive, massive issues here and trouble there for him. Certainly not the case or what he wanted to do there, but that is part of the deal sometimes. Jeff Ramsdell took a nasty little tumble there, but it looks like the truck is still relatively okay. It looks like just some little fender damage on the right front. So I think he'll be able to continue on a little bit. Christoph Hall though, ouch. Looked like what most drivers were feeling back at Talladega Saturday night. Get them square back up and getting ready to roll it up yet again. We're going to see what they bring to the table. back around here ladies and gentlemen here we're gonna get them fired up and yet again double filed in back around ladies and gentlemen here we're ready to get them fired up again all right ladies and gentlemen here we go back to the green flag here once more green is out we're now firing them off yet again Well, if you're going to make some moves, why not do it now? Three wide through the gap into the train section for one and two. Look at this. Calatani using Dalton up there as well. He'll get it to second. Macklin left into a bit of a state. Calatani, he's wasting no time. He's got one win, and that was at Martinsville. You know we would love to show the boys up on their turf, and he's doing it right now. They showed him up on his turf and his mind, so now he's got to get a little bit of that fight back in him. He's bringing the East Coast to the Midwest, but Macklin is a Navy brat. He does not go down without a fight. And Macklin continuing to move the chains around. Dalton currently just trying to see if he can figure something out here with Harrell now even moving right in between. You got a three-truck battle for that one. Meanwhile, everybody else, well... This is pretty much what it feels like inside that cockpit. We're on board with Doy Woods.
Buying him through the exit, through the turns here. Joe Hudson, the number 15, also trying to get a little bit of luck in this season. He's had some good top fives and some top tens, but he has not been able to really compass and really engage the top half of where he really thinks he should be. But that possibly change here. Look at this, though. Dalton, he's got problems. He's got a big problem here. The 19, 7500, way wide on the outside. Problems right now. He's losing a lot of ground. That's not something you usually see out of that camp and usually out of that driver. Something is going wrong inside that cockpit, and it's not looking good here. Dalton needs to get it figured out at pronto if he wants any chance, but it looks like this one might be slipping too far away. For one Kaltani, he's only got one driver in front of him that's got a win that got one more win than him, and one behind him that's looking to get one win on all of them. Trying to settle him back down. Ooh, a little bit of the nose picking it around, picking up a little pace, picking up a little dust and gap in between. Bolt drivers having a good little tussle and a good little fight out here as we take a look at our best lap times. A solid 31 fly will get you some places. Don Hickman Jr. Figuring that out ever so much. He's got the fastest lap time so far today. And he's looking to try to continue that pace with 22 laps remaining. Cars have not been able to get under the 30s though. 31s that is, they're not able to get in the 30s. They've been pretty much kind of in a consistent time, a consistent basis, but never in the absolute highest regards for what they're aiming for. Donnie Leah right now, currently our new uh, driver to the show. Welcome to the board there, my friend. He's off top 10 material right now, even with the lambs on the right side. As he's, as he's got a boy in that number 12. Trying to make his family proud on their wedding anniversary. Aaron Action Jackson, the Mobile One Jackson, number 12. Trying to hold him off, trying to bring down the power, bring down the lights and speed. Dakota Kramer staying on the bottom. He's trying to stay out of trouble at this point, not trying to get himself in any messes here. Charles Van Schaik, well, is there any surprise what he's up to already? We've known before what he'll do. He'll literally wait out and then fire back on all fours just to get this thing digged in. And that's exactly what he's up to right now. Donnie trying to get it right out on the back straight away here and get some run off there. But you can see Charles doing his old stick, his old tricks. And he's tough to figure out, man. When he gets it dialed in like that, that Roush... Number 23 is one tough cookie to crumble. We've seen him really just go long distance and fight it out to the end and then absolutely take care of business later on then. The 19 laps remaining, time is running out though. Carell laying low, probably trying to drag the brake a little bit to keep the truck relatively stable while at the same time don't try to burn up that right front tire too much. Remember that right front is extremely important to this truck. It may be a rear wheel drive truck, but the thing is all that weight and all that shift, it goes to the right front end when you make into the turn rather than the right rear because the way the springs and the aerodynamic package of this truck, the properties of it, case more of the speed to the right front so that way it kind of almost drives kind of similar to how you would do with the front wheel drive car, which is put all the weight there so you can kind of rip it right around each section and each turn. They think of each track as like kind of a, almost kind of like an uneven Lego set. You're trying to figure out a way to even out the set, so you're having to build and build and build upon each area and each structure by using the pieces of equipment you've got. The same is in a truck. You're trying to use every little piece of that shock absorber, the suspension, the sway bar, and everything that you can use to try to skew it almost into a perfectly centered end part of the track. So the way so the way it goes in, you want to center it out. The faster you can straighten out, the faster you can come. Straighter is faster in these kind of races. And that's exactly right now what these drivers are trying to figure out. They're trying to get dialed in here and continue to hang on with. And the packs really have separated out so far in between. Dalton, the shocker of them all, in my opinion, starting going down to the 16th spot. 
Russell Ottaway right there up there with him and Jeff Bryan as well. Meanwhile, everybody else kind of just doing their own little thing, their own little side battle and little side hustle. Unlike yours truly here in the booth, right now they are currently actually figuring out how to get it to work and how to make sure that they have a stable foundation with it. And you can see Shike down there. He's looking, he's looking at Jackson's rear end here. He wants a little bit of it. He wants to get around it. He wants to get every little turn he can off of him. But he just can't seem to find another grip or find another leg up on it. Jackson's still trying to defend. But you can see one wrong little corner tap, one wrong move. That could be bad. Running them back down to the edges here. The number 60, John Hickman Jr. He's another guy, too, that's also still looking for his first win of the season. He's got a few wins to his career on the show, but he's not got one this season in victory lane. Looking to try to change that here. He's got to run on Kyle Tani. And Kyle Tani not able to hold him back here. Big run coming up for the 60. The Norse Energy Drink getting some serious run down through there. And it looks like he's there nice enough. A mere 11 laps to go here. We'll see what happens here as we get a little bit later on. Samuel Rell and Brian B. Macklin here. They're all kind of boning down the track, kind of honing the speed in the crowd just with 10 laps left to go. Does Macklin have what it, he needs to run this to the end? This has been extremely good, extremely conservative. Macklin has definitely earned his keep today. Sammy Harrell looks like right now, he's just looking at yet another loss. And the Guns N' Roses 43, with a whole bunch of other drivers currently trying to clip up. I mean, the problem is for Harrell is again, he's got the power, he's got the speed. He just can't seem to put everything together just one time. He's almost turning into literally a Casey Kane or a Ryan Blaney, if you will, on these races. And you guys can come at me for that one if you want. But I'm being real with you guys. This season has been literally like a Ryan Blaney or Casey Kane situation for Sammy Horrell. He just has, he's got the talent. He's got the momentum. He's got the speed. He's got the guts. He's got the glory. He's got the blistering. But he just, for some reason, he can't get this truck to dial up and get into victory lane for once. And again, I know it's extremely difficult when you got guys that literally are trumping you and irating and then trumping you and literally in power and speed, but I mean, at the end of the day, you still have to go out there and you still have to race. And I think that's exactly what he's been trying to figure out, he's been trying to do, but it just has not been working up to his standards, up to his selection here. Little corner off. Oh, oh, wait a minute. About three wide down there. The turn there. Looked like John Hickman Jr. had a little bit of an idea, but Doy Woods had a similar idea. Uh oh. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Oh my. Oh, oh. That could have been bad. How the heck did Doy Woods and John Hickman Jr. save that? Is beyond me. Dijon Monte almost going straight to the shadow realm thanks to those two. But they held on. Although, if you're Sammy Harrell right now, you're probably thinking, like, could those two have just given me this one time for a caution? That would certainly have helped. Is it going to get them another chance to go head-to-head -head against Macklin here? 
But unfortunately, I don't think they're going to get that kind of luck here, my friend. Bringing him back down. Big fight out. Counts on it. He's fighting. He's trying to defend, but he's not going to get much help from that one. Going to try driving it a little deeper on the outside, then trying to get it to stick there so he can't get a pass on him. Makes it much more of an inconvenience to try to make a pass. Ooh, get the left rear corner panel just a little bit. You saw the tap there. Calatani felt that, but he hanged on. But it did slow him up a bit. Got the truck to slide out just a little bit. Now under the nose. Five laps to go. Macklin currently running away with this one without any qualm or any issues there. Hudson, Jackson, and Shike all making a break for it. Calatani desperately trying to hold it down, but he's going to get passed by Hudson. Hudson right now looking pretty good here. With the last bit starting to come through to the final edge of the race here. Every driver having a little bit of a story to tell in the top ten. Four to go. Jackson out of the inside. Looking for the runoff to get to the seventh spot. And Shike looking maybe to play a little game of Russian roulette, if you will, here. Oh, ho, 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 my, my, my. He does not give an inch. And does that. He seemed to mind it whatsoever. Shotting it back down to the turn. Entering in the corner. Kalatani desperately trying to hold on. Three to go. Now two. Yeah, three to go this time on by. Battles continue to rage on. Scott Simley, man, I don't know how that number seven is doing as much as he is right now, but boy, is he putting a fight to Toy Woods. Big battle going on for third. Macklin loving every minute of what he's seeing, though. Knows he didn't have to worry about anything else but just taking care of his own equipment, taking care of himself out there, and seeing the writing on the walls. These drivers are giving it everything they've got and then some, but man, this is just not playing out in their favor. Excellent, sure that 30 camp right ahead of all of them. He's got back-to-back -back wins already this season. He's looking for win number three. All on him, but this time right, white flag coming out. Ryan V. Macklin. Looking to get the Navy Brat just squared up one more time. Samuel Rell trying to defend one more run from Woods, one more run from Simley. Here's the crossover. Now Simley gonna look for another opening here. Gonna try setting it down. Woods, Simley, Harrell. Hard charge off, but off the final corner. Brian V. Macklin's taking three this season. Macklin wins it in Chicagoland. There he is. He's going to park this bad boy in Victor Lane yet again. Been a while, but he's going to take it home. Macklin gets win number three. Second on the asphalt of the season. Third overall. performance and really by a driver I think you kind of expect nothing less from we'll take a listen to our top three drivers in just a moment here but race fans here is your final results presented by race day sports memorabilia your results show Brian V Mack on your winner Doy was making the jump to second Samuel holds off for third Scott's only gonna go for John Hagman jr. gonna go fifth sixth to Joe Hudson 
Aranax Jackson bring it home. Seventh, eighth at the end. Calatane, knife to Charles Van Schaik. The hard charger, 21 spots to the distance. And then Donnie Leia going to bring himself a nice top 10 to round out the field here in their first showcase today. Here on Pizza Race TV, great showcase by all drivers though involved. What a performance by every driver. Firing all cylinders and trying to get this dialed in. That is what we call a race, my friends. All right, there's last one last thing of business to take care of here, ladies and gentlemen. We're going to now talk to the top three. You know who starts this one up here. A podium once again. Samuel Harrell going to take it on home for third. And Samuel, congratulations on that. But... Man, I, I keep trying to talk about this, and I hope you don't get mad at me for saying this, but you literally are pulling like a Ryan Blaine and Casey Kane out here this season, man. You put this thing in the podium, put it in second, and you're so close to getting that thing in the top spot. What do you have to do to get this thing up to the front, man, and get ahead of these guys? I just got to make it to the playoffs. That's it. I mean, my time's coming. We, we got some good racers in this league, and, uh, just got to keep the pedal down. It's coming. My time's coming. Well, we know your time is coming, and eventually it's got to be giving you one last chance here. But, I mean, for all intents and purposes here, man, you absolutely put on a good little show, put on a good run. But how how hard was it just to try to fight off the last bit there? Because it looked like you had two drivers really want to take your spots over there at the last bit. Yeah, I burn up my right front Um, just staying a little bit too close to – anthony and brian on that last run and i burn it up a little bit and then once anthony hit the wall i just lost the draft so i couldn't catch back up and i actually i got tight when doy got to my right rear i hope i didn't mess him up too bad um just you got to keep that right front cool and i didn't do it on that last run well, I may not get it this time around, but something to certainly learn for the next go. But nevertheless, here, as you come away today third, who do you want to thank you for this one today? Again, I want to thank uh, Charles for all the hard work he puts into this league and my teammates and everybody that supports me at home. For sure there. Well, Samuel, congratulations for bringing this one on home third today, sir. Thank you, buddy. Samuel Harrell. Bringing it on home for a solid third place today, ladies and gentlemen. Going to be a very interesting talk here with our second place finisher here, Doy Woods. Popping up a nice little position there in the number 28 camp. He's going to join us here on the broadcast channel. He's out of the truck, ladies and gentlemen. Second place finisher today, Doy Woods here on us. And uh, Doy, yet again, sir, once more you put up a great performance and a great battle there. But coming away with the podium here and getting second place. I mean, how did this one feel to the line, sir? Yeah, it was fun. I wish I had some more laps. Uh, just a little too conservative, but it was fun passing. Could have been a couple wrecks there. It's tight, hard racing. Everybody racing hard, and uh, thankfully to come out with a second place. I closed second place, and uh, which that pays more money, so that's good for me. And uh, So I can't complain. Good win for Macklin. I just needed more time. Just a little more time, a little bit more of an effort, but I mean, hey, He's still popping up with a pretty good little performance. It's still a pretty good little position here when you needed to, too. So I'll ask you this real quick. I mean, you're now looking at possibly adding more playoff points and more chances to get into that big old situation. I mean, how important was this one for you to get this position today? Well, you know, I just want to win, and uh, that's all that matters. You know, there's winning and there's misery, and uh, I'm tired of going through misery. I want to do some winning all the time, and that's the bottom line, and that's why I'm here for. Well, currently have got that figured out, and currently just need to get it to where we've talked with Sammy Rell just a minute ago about that. So while you two figure out how to get into victory lane, you're still going to get it in a second today. So, Doy, man, I'll ask you this. Who do you want to thank you for this one, sir? Everybody back at the shop, Chad, Pedro, I hang with the best, and that makes me, you know, the best. And uh, iron sharpens iron, and I tell you, we uh, we the best, and uh, that's the bottom line. Well, you heard it, because Doy Woods said so, ladies and gentlemen. Congratulations on the second place today, sir. Thank you, sir, and you do a heck of a job, by the way. Hell of a job. I appreciate the support, man. Thanks for tuning in, as always. Ladies and gentlemen, Doy Woods going to take it on home to second place.
As I get kind of a little stone cold vibe there from him, and we'll give old Brian V. Macklin the old stone cold salute and with a hell yeah in between a few beers here. Macklin, take your beer and get this one in. Third win of the season, two on asphalt, one from dirt. How's this one feel today here at Chicagoland? Oh man, this was a wild race. Um, this has always been one of my favorite tracks to race on. Chicagoland always puts on a great show, and I've always felt like it was one of my better tracks. So I was excited to get to race here and, and try to turn around some of the bad luck that I've had the last month or so. And uh, had a great race there at the end of stage two with EJ. I'm sure that was good on TV. So looking forward to go back and looking at that. But man, this was a good night. Good night indeed. Yeah, I was about to say, two st the two stage wins and the final stage. And it looked like early on you had a little bit of work to do in terms of the restarts. I mean, how hard is it to kind of get past that jumbled restart, then have to try to defend off with everyone else trying to hunt you down there? Yeah, I mean, the restarts got jumbled because of all the, the varying pitch strategies with some guys elected not to take tires, some guys taking tires the way we did. You know, it, it just makes it interesting. To say the least, you know, the end of the or the beginning of the second stage when those handful of guys stayed out on older tires and, and we all took tires. That was fun trying to go around them on the outside three wide. I'm uh, pretty sure we had a close call with Tommy at one point, which was kind of wild. But um, once you get out front, honestly, the clean air matters so much. And I knew as long as I could get the lead and just control the, the dirty air on everybody behind me that eventually the tires for them were going to go away. And so like they're on that last run. I just kept dumping dirty air on, on Cal and Tony. Uh, and I just, I didn't try to drive away. I ran just hard enough to stay right in front of him and the dirty air made his tires fall off. And then once that happened, I was able to drive off into the sunset, drive off in the sunset, bring it back into victory lane, Macklin third of the season. You know what to do, but do you want to thank her? Yeah, of course. I got to thank you for putting on this broadcast. Can't wait to go back and watch it. Got to thank all the admins here at goat for putting on this, this series and the Thursday night series as well, because it's, it's nice to jump in here and have a good time. Uh, Got to thank all of our men and women that serve in the Navy and all the other uh, military forces that we have. Uh, without them, we don't get to sit here and enjoy this at all. So I also got to thank my uh, Sim 500 Monday Night Cup Series sponsor, Personal Comfort, and Scott Stenzel uh, for sponsoring me in that series. And then, of course, the American Lung Association, who's been a big part of my life since my grandmother passed away. For sure there, Macklin. Definitely a lot of big names and big stuff going for your way here and taking this one on home today. Congratulations to Chicago Land, sir. Yes, sir. We'll run it back next week. Run it back indeed. Ladies and gentlemen, your winner today at Chicagoland, Brian V. Macklin. Well, that'll about wrap it up here today for your Race City Sports Marabilia Truck Series. Thanks again to the RCSM as well. And thank you, everyone, for tuning on in. It's been a pleasure. Happy anniversary to the young couple down there, 54 years young. Congratulations to you both. Nevertheless, have a good time out there, and have a good night to everyone out there. Be safe. We'll catch you guys tomorrow night. One more race for Six Sigma Sim Racing Oval League. It should be a quick one and a hot one. We'll see you guys there with them in their Cup Series. Stay tuned, ladies and gentlemen. See you tomorrow night. <laughs>